You and I don't have to pay much in the cost of our faith in America. The church is guilty of chasing after so many other things. And someone says, we're living in a day of tremendous persecution. Well, not here in this country. They may mock our God. They make fun of our God. But we're not living a persecution where you're going to give your life for. Because really, when it comes down to it, we can go through all of the routines of the faith. We can speak all the language of the faith. But there's really no consequence as far as the culture other than someone might think less of you because you're a religious nut. Not only are we not experiencing it to the degree that they did in the New Testament, but I'm not sure that we would be even ready to experience it. In Acts chapter 8, it begins following the death of Stephen. At that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. Pentecost has happened. Jerusalem is filled with the power of God. But the response of the culture in a paganistic world was astonishing. Every force of the dark side was being leveled against the people of God. And they were being put to death. And it results in an even greater expansion of the kingdom of God. They were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. And do you know that that fulfilled the prophecy of Jesus? Jesus said prior to Pentecost, go to Jerusalem, be filled with power. You're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. They had revival in Jerusalem, and they, like us, would be content to just remain in the atmosphere of revival. But the Holy Spirit would not allow that. Why? To accomplish the prophecy of Jesus and the agenda of heaven. And they were scattered everywhere. What purpose? But that the kingdom of God would be advanced to other territories. And look in verse 3, it says, For Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. And so may I ask you, are you ready for that? We're so far removed, we cannot even imagine that that could ever happen. But are we ready for that? There has to be fight in you and effort in you to seek first the kingdom of God. If the table were to turn tomorrow and you turn on the news and the whole culture shifted and it was against the law to be a Christian, would that falter your commitment? Would that cause you to go into seclusion? Would it cause you to have a second consideration over the cost of the cross? A few weeks ago, I received an email from Pastor Felix about the state of the church in Africa. They have no fine, fancy buildings. They have no slick programming. They have no money. There's a famine that is causing thousands to die. You know, he said to me, when we get together, we gather for six hours just talking about the Lord, talking about the scriptures, sharing, praying, encouraging one another six hours and then he said last week we lost two people in our community because of starvation I can't help but I look at that and I think to myself we can't hardly tolerate an hour together because we've got so many other things we need to do there's football and there's people to see and there's recreation and there's places to take my kids and we're going here and there and our lives are filled with so much clutter and so many options and we're seeking and chasing after the wind and our heart has lost its passion and there's this lack of zeal and I think to myself what will it take in the North American church for us to be shaken out of our stupor we're the richest of all the people in all of the world yet somehow we've lost the tremendous possibilities that we could have in Jesus.